All right, welcome back everybody. We are on lesson 7.5 covering rational exponents. So this whole lesson pretty much works so that you understand the difference between powers and roots and the different way that exponents work and things like that. So let's go ahead and look into the first topic. So the first part says that negative exponents are reciprocals, right? We, we should know this for the most part. We know that working with exponents, say we had 2 raised to the negative third power, in order to make this negative 3 positive, we would have to find the reciprocal of 2. So the reciprocal of 2, we know that 2 over 1 doesn't change its value, it stays the same. So the reciprocal of that would be 1 over 2 raised to the third power, right? So we kind of have had some experience with negative exponents being reciprocals, but now we're going to look at it in a little bit different way. So the first thing that it wants us to do, it says, use a graphing calculator to compare the graphs of f of x equals 2 to the negative x power and g of x equals 1 half to the, to the x power. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in our calculator. So we have 2. In order to put in an exponent that's not a standard, you use this little carrot top. Negative is down here. So 2 raised to the negative x power. And then our second one, so we've got 1 half raised to the power of x. So let's go ahead and graph this. So what we should notice about this is that there aren't two lines going anywhere, right? So if we took this one off and graphed it, we get that. And if we just typed in our first one, 1 half raised to the power of x, it's still the same, right? So that's the first thing it says, what do you notice? We notice that they're the same. All right, and let's talk about that for a second. So we had 2 raised to the negative power of x, which we know that 2, just like we did up here, is over 1. And in order to make this negative x positive, we're going to flip this and get the reciprocal, um, so we get 1 half, and our x becomes positive. All right. Example 1 says, rewrite each expression using only positive exponents. Compare the original expression to the new expression. If your expression is correct, they will be equal to each other. So 1 over 5 raised to the negative first power, we just flip it. We get 5 over 1 raised to the first power. Which is just the same as saying 5. Right? 5 raised to the negative second power, so that 5 is over 1. So we flip it. We get 1 fifth raised to the second power. All right, and then for C, we have 2 over 5 raised to the negative second power. We flip it. We get 5 over 2 raised to the second power. And if you're feeling fancy, you can pull out a calculator and type these into your graph and make sure that they're the same, which they all will be because they're reciprocal. So we know we did it correct. All right, so let's recall a little bit of information to help us get through this. So a power tells you how many times to multiply something by itself. All right, a power is the exponent, right? So 4 to the third power. That tells us we're multiplying 4 by itself three times. A root tells us how many times something has been multiplied together. So when we say the square root of 4, we know that this has been multiplied together twice, right? Because a square root automatically has a root of 2. So this 2 right here is our root value. Similar in a way, we could go up from a square root. Square root is the standard, the norm, but we could also easily have a cubed root of, say, 8. So this 3, once again, is your root, telling you how many times it's been multiplied together. Powers and roots are inverse or opposite operations. Use your calculator to complete the table. So let's go ahead and look at a few things on this calculator. So we've got 4 raised to the power of 1 half. So let's go ahead and put that in there. 4 raised to the power of 1 half. 
and we get 2. Now we've got a root um, expression, the square root of 4 raised to the first power. We don't all have to put this 2 there. We know that a square root always has a root value of 2. So the square root of 4, so let's go ahead and type that one in. To get the square root, you're going to hit second x squared. So the square root of 4 is going to give us 2. So then we've got 64 raised to the one-third power. We get 4. Let's go ahead and type this one in. A couple ways you can get a cubed root. The easiest way being um, go to math and then scroll down right here. Number 4, you'll see a cubed root. If you have a root higher than 3, you'll go down to 5 and you'll be able to type in the value of that x. So cubed root of 64 and it was raised to the first power. Notice we get 4 for both. All right, now we've got 8 raised to the 2 thirds power, and we get 4. Now we've got the cubed root of 8 squared. So let's go back again. Cubed root number 4, cubed root of 8 squared, also 4. Look at that. All right, now 16 raised to the 1 fourth power, we get 2. Now we have a 4 in place of our root of 16 to the first power. So this time we're going to have to go to math and go to number 5 right here. Oh, it has my answer in there, so type in the 5. Math, 5. And that was 16 raised to the first power, which I know doesn't change it, but I want to type it in the exact same way. Oh, I put a 5. That's my fault. 4, math, 5. That's why I placed 5. 16 to the first power. All right, so we get 2. So 2 for both of those. All right, just a few more. So we have 25 raised to the negative 1 half. And we get 0 0.2, which we can convert to a fraction by hitting math, enter, enter. And we get 1 fifth. And then we've got the square root of 25 raised to the negative first power. Notice we had to get rid of this negative exponent, right? So we flipped it, got the reciprocal, we got 1 over the square root of 25. So let's go ahead and type that in. 1 over the square root of 25 gives us 0 0.2 again. So look at that. We've got the same answer for both. Notice the pattern here? Hopefully you do. All right, last one. We've got 2 cubed raised to the power of 1 half. All right, so go ahead and be careful when you type this in. 2 cubed, then raised to the power of 1 half. All right, we get a crazy decimal. Does it? Oh, I didn't close my bracket. Hold on. 2 cubed, there we go, to the power of 1 half. This is being so finicky. How small my parentheses sometimes. Okay, now, we sh now we're now we're done. It's one and a half. All right? So we still get a decimal, but this one is the right answer. 2.828. All right, so let's go ahead and type this one in. We have the square root of 2 cubed. So square root of 2 cubed. Same answer once again. We'll, we'll just put 2.83 in both of those. So now that we've filled out this chart, let's compare these values in the chart and try to understand it a little bit more. So it says, compare the values in each row. What do you notice about the values? Values being our numerical value for both. Well, obviously, they're the same the whole way down. So that's what we notice. They're the same. 
I mean, and then it says, well, what is the pattern? Okay, well, there's actually a couple of patterns that we need to talk about here. The first thing is that our base and our radicand are the same, right? So our base, meaning what we started with over here, and our radicand, meaning the number underneath our square root symbol, right? All of these numbers are the same. So we're going to write that down. that in parentheses so you guys make sure you understand what that means. All right, so that's the first pattern we noticed, but it's not the only one. We also noticed some things going on with these original powers and roots, right? So let's talk about this first number, our actual root value, right? That is going to be the same as our denominator, right? I can highlight that. So the same as our denominator is our cubed root or our whatever our root is, right? So we've got our index root I'm just going to write like that. Our index root is the same is oops, the denominator I'm going to abbreviate this because I don't have room the denominator of the fractional oh, this is a long one exponent right and all that's saying is our index root is the same as the denominator of our fractional exponent. All right, but do we notice anything about our numerator? The number from our numerator. We should. This is our radicand exponent, right? This one, this two, this one. So in order to write this, this is going to be sloppy, so just bear with me. Our radicand exponent. is the same as the numerator and I'm just going to say of the fractional exponent. Okay, I'm just going to point an arrow up there. Hopefully you guys understand. Radicand exponent is the same as the numerator of the fractional exponent. Okay, so those are the patterns that we notice while we're looking at that. And this is why they're opposites. All right, so let's talk about writing exponents as roots. Exponents can be written as roots. So notice we've got x raised to the power of a over b. So just like we learned before, our index root is going to become what? If we're looking at our index root, this is going to be the denominator of our fractional exponent. Okay? Index root, we pull from the denominator. And then for a, this is our radicand exponent, and we pull from the numerator. So it can be written the square root of x, whatever the root power may be, raised to the power of a. So let's rewrite these so we know that b goes first and a goes second. b goes first and a goes second. Right, so let's go ahead and start just by putting the square root of 3, right? We know that's what our main number that we're working with is going to be and going to stay, so now we just need to fill in the blanks. So our numerator is going to become our root, and our, denomina our denominator is going to become our root, and our numerator is going to become our radicand exponent. So the square root of 3 raised to the fifth power. Same thing over here. Let's go ahead and just start with the square root of x and fill in as we go. Our denominator becomes our root, 
and our numerator becomes our radicand exponent. So just like that. All right, 16 over, I mean raised to the power of 3 fourths. Let's go ahead and start with the square root of 16. Our denominator becomes our root value. And our numerator becomes our radicand exponent. So all you're doing is just rearranging this pretty much. All right, well the same thing is going to make sense for writing roots as exponents. You're going to take that original whatever they gave you and move it to look like the original fraction. So B becomes our denominator and A becomes our numerator. So A is our numerator and B is our denominator. All right, so when we have the square root of 5, you may be wondering what we're going to do with this. But understand that a square root always has a root pow uh, value of 2, and if there's no exponent, it's raised to the power of 1. So now we can flip this into what it's actually saying. So start with your 5, and then fill in the blanks. 2 is going to become our denominator, 1 is going to become our numerator, so we have 5 raised to the power of 1 half. Alright, now we've got the square root of x raised to the power of 4. So once again, understood, um, know that there is a 2 right here, and understood power or root. So then we're going to have x, our root becomes our denominator and our exponent becomes our numerator so we're going to have 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is the same thing as 2 so we can simplify that to x squared. Alright, now we've got the cube root of 8 raised to the fourth power. Once again just start with that base number and then fill in the blank. So 3 is going to become our denominator and 4 is going to become our numerator so we have 8 raised to the power of 4 thirds. Alright, so let's talk about some applications. Suppose you are keeping a census of the rabbit population on the island. You expect the population to quadruple every year. There were 16 rabbits initially. You count them twice a year. So, you could adjust the variable or you could adjust the exponent. So the first thing we need to do in both is define the variables. So first, let the number of month of six month intervals be x, right? So you can understand this by reading it. You count them twice a year. That means there's six month intervals, right? Time is always going to be our independent variable. X, we should always remember, is our independent variable. And then we're going to let y equal the number of rabbits because the number of rabbits depends on the amount of time, right? So, the way that we fill this in using our fo standard form, hopefully remember, y equals a times b raised to the power of x. So then we just plug it in. So we have y equals 16 came from our initial value, right? Remember, a is our y-intercept for our initial value. So then we plug that in. So 16 was our initial value. And then we got the 4 because we expect it to quadruple every year. So then the question asks us, how many are there after 5 years? Alright, well let's figure it out. So, we know that 5 years equals 60 months. Over this course of 60 months, we will have six-month intervals, right? So how many six-month intervals will we have? Ten. So we're going to have ten six-month intervals. So this ten is our number of rabbits, right? 
not number of rabbits, I don't know why I just said it. This 10 is our number of six month intervals, so we're gonna plug that in for x. So then we're gonna have 16 times four raised to the 10th power. All right, so let's plug that into our calculator. We have 16 times four raised to the power of 10. And we get this huge number. So y equals 16,777,216 rabbits. That is a lot of rabbits and kind of nasty. But that's beside the point. We're going to have this many rabbits by the end of five years. Your other option is to adjust the exponent. So once again, to find the variable, let x equal the number of years and let y equal the number of rabbits. So this 16 and this 4 are going to stay the same, but if we want to do the number of years as opposed to 6 month intervals, we'll have to be raised to the power of 2x. So 2 times whatever the amount of 6 month intervals is. So we would have y equals 16, not 3 square parentheses, 16 times 4. And we know that we want x to equal the number of years. Well, it told us how many are there after 5 years. So we're going to have 2 times 5. All right, and just to prove this further, let's go ahead and type it in. So we have 16 times 4 raised to the power of 2 times 5, which is just going to be 10. So our number will be exactly the same. 16,777,216 rabbits. That many rabbits would terrify me. All right. Now it says, suppose you are still monitoring the same rabbit population, but decide to count them every other year. All right, so that's just going to change our, our exponents that we're working with, right? So now we want x to equal the number of two-year intervals. All right, if you're dealing with a time frame, that is always going to be what your x value is. And we want y, once again, to equal our number of rabbits. y is what are we trying to figure out? And we're trying to figure out how many rabbits are going to be left. All right, so we've got 16 times 4 raised to the power of x. So question remains, how many are there after five years? But we're now doing two-year intervals. So if we have five years, it's going to be divided by two-year intervals, right? So we have 2.5. So then we plug that in. 16, 16 times 4 raised to the power of 2.5. All right, so let's go to the calculator and plug that in. 16 times 4 raised to the power of 2.5 and we get 512. So now we're going to have 512 rabbits. All right, the next one is to adjust the exponent. And it says to find the variables once again, we're going to be dealing with time, but this time we're only going to do number of years instead of number of two-year intervals. And once again, y is going to equal the number of rabbits. So when we get this, 16 times 4, now our number of years has to be divided by 2 because we're adjusting this exponent. And dividing by 2 will give us our number of two-year intervals. So we're going to have y equals 16 times 4 raised to the power, it said how many are there after five years, so we're going to raise that to the power of five over two, All right? We plug in that x in the, as our input. And let's go ahead and go to the calculator. 16 times four raised to the power of five over two. And once again, 512 rabbits. All right, now we need to go over writing exponential equations given a y-intercept and another point. So if you can recall, when we were given two ordered pairs, and we needed to write 
um, the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, we found the slope by using the y sub 2, oops, I got my list too thick. So we did y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, right? And that gave us our slope. And then we could solve for b and substitute m and b into the equation. So we're going to use a similar process to write an exponential equation given the y-intercept in a point, right? Remember that our y-intercept has an x value of 0, so we don't have to solve for our um, y-intercept here. Our y-intercept is 5, right? So that's what it says in the first step here. The y-intercept is 0, 5, so a is 5. So we know that we're going to plug 5 into a. Then we're going to substitute the other points, right? This is our ordered pair, into x and y. So remember, this is our x and this is our y. So we're going to have 40 equals 5 times b cubed. All right, and when we work this out, we work it out just like we would anything else. So we're going to start by dividing by 5. And when you divide by 5, you get 8 equals b cubed. All right, hopefully we remember in order to get rid of a square root or anything like that, we do that opposite. So in order to get rid of a an exponent of 3, we take the cubed root. So take the cubed root of both sides. And that's how we get the cubed root of 8 equals the cubed root of b cubed. Right? When we do that, this cubed root and the exponent are going to cancel out. So then we just need the cubed root of 8, which is 2. So b equals 2. That's how we solve for b. And then we just plug it in. So we've got y equals 5 times 2 raised to the power of x. Make sure you leave your final equation in y and x variables. Don't, don't have a number in there for this. Alright, so let's work one out. Alright, so it says given 0 and 132 and 2 and 84.48, write an exponential equation in standard form. Alright, so first things first, let's remember that our equation, y equals abx to the x power, right? 0 and 132, we have an x value of 0, so this is our y-intercept. So then we're going to use this ordered pair as our x and y values. So y goes first, 84.48 equals a which is 132, times b, raised to the power of x, which is 2, so squared. All right, we're going to start by dividing by 132. All right, so 84.48 divided by 132 is going to give us 0.64. I'm going to this cancel out, so it's b squared. In order to get rid of this squared exponent, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So that cancels out, and then you're left with b. So the square root of 0.64 is 0.8 equals b. So then we can write our equation, y equals 132 times 0.8 raised to the power of x. It guys.